Dear students, welcome to the course Operating Systems. Today we are going to discuss self-learning topic one of Operating System. Welcome to the self-learning topic one. This is Dr. K. Pravin Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Information Technology, Kids Faranga. So in this SLT1, we are going to discuss about what operating systems do, what is computer system organization, operating system operations. Objectives of this SLT is, upon this class, the basic concepts of operating system and roles of operate, operating systems knowledge will be gained. And uh, the lecture outcome is upon completion of this lecture, you are able to define the operating system, identify the basic functionalities of operating system. Coming to the first topic. An operating system is a program that manages a computer's hardware. It also provides a basis for application program and acts as an intermediary between a computer user and another computer hardware. Generally, personal computer operating system supports complex games, business applications, and everything in between. Operating systems for mobile computer provides an environment in which user can easily interface with the computer to execute programs. Because an operating system is a large and complex, it must be created piece by piece. Each of these pieces should be well defined portion of the system with carefully defined inputs, outputs and functions. We see these are the operating system roles. A computer system can be divided roughly into four components that are hardware components, operating system, application program, and the user. So here you can see the computer hardware and upon computer hardware, we will install this operating system Upon operating system, you will install all the application programs. The application programs may be the compilers, assemblers, text editors, music players, video players, and so on. So hardware comprising of central processing units, that is CPU, memory, I.O. devices, Application program comprises of words, uh, words, Excel, compilers, web browsers, and so on. Operating system has two viewpoints. One is user viewpoint, and the other one is system viewpoint. What are the types of user views? So single user viewpoint, multiple user viewpoints, handle user viewpoints, and embedded system user viewpoints. What is user view? Single user view. Single user view is most computers, users use a monitor, keyboard, mouse, printer, and other accessories to operate their computer systems. In some cases, the system is designed to maximize the output of a single user. As a result, more attention is laid on accessibility and resources allocation and less importance. These systems are much more designed for a single user experience and meet the need of a single user, where the performance is not given focus as the multiple user systems. Coming to multiple user viewpoints. So the other example of user views in which the importance of user experience and performance is given is when there is one mainframe computer and many users on their computer trying to interact with the, their kernel over their mainframes to each other. So that is comes under multiple user viewpoint. So in such cases, 
memory allocation by the CPU must be done effectively to give a good user experience. The client server architecture, as we have discussed with the client server architecture, is another good example where many clients may interact with a remote server. And the same constraints of effective use of server resource may arise. The next one is handled user viewpoint. Moreover, the touchscreen era has given you the best handheld technology ever smartphones, whatever you are using, the mobile phones and smartphones, interact via wireless devices to perform numerous operations, but they are not as efficient as computer interface because of its limiting usefulness. However, their operating system is great example of creating devices focused on user point of view. That is uh, handheld uh, user viewpoints. And uh, the next user viewpoint is embedded systems. So some systems like embedded systems that lack a super point of view, the remote control used to turn off, turn on your TV and is all parts of an embedded system in which the electronic device communicate with uh, another program where the user viewpoint is limited and allows the user to engage with that particular application. System view. The OS may also be viewed as just a resource allocator. A computer system comprises various sources such as hardware, software, which must be managed effectively. The operating system manages resources, decides between competing demands, controls the program execution, etc. So according to this point of view, the operating system's purpose is to maximize the performance. The operating system is responsible for managing hardware resources and allocating them to programs and users to ensure maximum performance. Resource allocation. The hardware contains several resources like resistors, caches, random access memory, read-only memory, CPUs, I.O. device interaction, etc. These are all the resources that the operating system needs when an application program demands them. So only the operating system can allocate the resources and it has used several tactics and strategies to maximize its processing and memory space. So these algorithms, uh, resource allocation algorithm, we will discuss in the unit two in the scheduling algorithms. So the operating system uses a variety of strategies to get the most of the hardware resources, including paging, virtual memory, caching, etc. These are very important in the case of various user viewpoints because inefficient resource allocation may affect the user viewpoint, causing the user system to lag or hang, reducing the user experiences. Control program. So the control program controls how input and output devices interact with the operating system. The user may request an action that can only be done with I.O. devices. In this case, the operating system must also have proper communication control and detect and hand handle such devices. Computer system organization. So computer system operations, storage structure, IO structure uh, contains computer system organization. So the operations, computer system operations, one or more CPU devices device controllers connect through common bus providing access to shared memory. So see here, uh, this memory is connected with the CPU, disk controller, USB controller, graphic adapter. These are all the components which is connected with the help of system bus to the memory. So the examples of disk controller for disks, 
disk controller will control the different disk. USB controller will control the different USB connections like mouse, keyboard, printer. And if you are connecting with some devices by using USB port there, that all will be controlled by your USB controller. Graphics adapter. Generally, whatever we are watching on the movies or the, all the graphics can be enabled with the help of uh, the graphics driver. So for that graphics driver, to control that graphics driver, you will be having one graphics adapter. So it will be having every uh, device having its own controllers. Each device controller has its own local buffer. That is, memory will be allocated. So common functions of interrupts. So interrupt transfers control to the interrupt service routine generally through interrupt vector. So whenever you want to stop one process and you want to continue with another one, then you will use this interrupt signal. So generally, to stop that particular process, we send a interrupt vector which contains the address of all the service routines. Interrupt architecture must save the address of the interrupted instructions. So generally a trap or exception is a software generated interrupt caused either by an error or a user request. Generally operating system is an interrupt driven systems. So computer startups, generally computer will start by using its bootstrap program, which is loaded at the time of power up. So typically stored in ROM or that is read only memory or uh, electrically programmable read-only memory, generally known as, it's a firmware, firmware. So it initializes all aspects of uh, systems and loads operating system kernel and starts the execution. So this is what generally happens when you are starting the, your power on your systems. So interrupt handling, interrupt handling is generally uh, done by the operating system it preserves the state of the CPU by storing the resistors and the program counters. Whenever you are interrupting, then interrupting a process immediately, it will be store the status of that process. And it determines which type of interrupt has occurred, whether it is a polling interrupt or vectored interrupt. So separate segments of code determine what action should be taken for each type of interrupt. So this is uh, generally whenever the interrupt drive cycle, when the CPU uh, device drivers initiate I.O., then I.O. controller initiates this uh, I.O. devices, then input ready, output complete, or error generate such a type of system calls will be here uh, related to the I.O. devices, then CPU receives this interrupt transfer controls to interrupt handles. That in the next step, interrupt handler process data returns from interrupt. Then CPU resumes processing of interrupted task. Then device driver again initializes its IO. So this is generally happened. This uh, IO cycle that is interrupt drive IO cycle. I.O. structure. So after I.O. starts, control returns to user programs only upon I.O. completion. Wait instruction idle, the CPU until the next interruption and uh, wait loop will be continuous. At most one I.O. request is outstanding at a time, no simultaneous I.O.s will be processed. After I.O. starts, Control returns to the user program without waiting for I.O. completion. System calls will request to operating system to allow user to wait for I.O. completion and a device status table contains entry for each I.O. device indicating its type, address, and states. OS indexes into I.O. device table to determine device status and to modify table entry to include interrupt. Coming to story structure. 
So storage structure, main memory only large storage media uh, that the CPU can access directly. Random access are typically volatile. So random access memory in the form of dynamic random access memory that is called as DRAM. So secondary storage. Secondary storage is an extension of main memory as we have discussed in earlier videos that provides large non-volatile storage capacity. Volatile means it's an erasable. When uh, the power shutdowns, the uh, data will be erased. Non-volatile means it's a permanent memory, even though the power of the system, uh, the storage cannot be lost. Next one is uh, hard disk drives. Hard disk drives, uh, it's a rigid metal or some glass platters covered with a magnetic recording material. Disk surface is logically divided into tracks, and again, it is subdivided into the sectors. So the disk controller determines the logical interaction between the device and the computer. Non-volatile memory devices faster than the hard disk. Non-volatile various technologies like your CDs, you can say non-volatile, becoming more popular as capacity and performance increases and less price. So thank you all. Uh, this is the end of SLT1. Thank you.